Hi guys, it's Laura from Doggy U, and today we're going to be doing like a little bit of an update type of video. We're going to start with talking about my recent trip to Theodore Roosevelt National Park that I just got back from last night where I slept in my Subaru Outback for the first time in 16 degree weather. So I'm going to talk about how we handled that and some, some tips for doing that. And then we're also going to talk about a big life change that's happening for me. I know you're gonna think this sounds crazy, but we're moving again. So I'm gonna talk all about why we're doing that, uh, my new job, and all sorts of other fun stuff. So stay tuned. So in this video, I'm gonna give you like a life update kind of thing. So many of you know I've been trying to uh, make sure that I get to all 50 states. It's a goal I set when I was 22 and first started working for Fidelco Guide Dog Foundation and started traveling the country for work. Uh, fast forward, I'm now 31 and I just hit my 49th state, which was North Dakota in February and it was just as bad driving as you think it was. Um, but I really wanted to hit North Dakota before I hit Hawaii, and I'm going to Hawaii on Saturday for my sister's 30th birthday, so we're having this big epic trip to Hawaii. I had to make it to North Dakota, and I also wanted to try car camping in the Subaru in the cold, so we combined all that into one trip. So I headed out on Monday after I taught my tricks class, um, and I drove mostly through the night with one little stop and then another stop for sleeping which I slept for two or three hours. So sleeping in the Subaru Outback in 16 degree weather. Uh, first thing is I wanted to make sure I was safe uh, and make sure that my car would start again because I took that I had two options for route. I took the fastest route which probably wasn't the best idea because it was also a less traveled route. I saw maybe one or two cars per hour. It was crazy um, in the middle of the night while I was driving. So I did end up finding like five hours in I found this rest stop. Maybe it was in Wyoming. No, I can't even remember. It was a long night. Um, but I found a place that had, um, it was one of those roadside rest stops. It was well lit. It had a bathroom and a warm area. And I and I also had cell service. So I knew if my car didn't turn back on, I could call AAA. Um, and I could also stay warm in the rest area. Uh, there's only one other guy there sleeping in his truck camper. And what we did is I put all the seats down in the back of the Subaru. I took my mattress out of my camper van put it in the back of the Subaru. It's this old Cabela's mattress that has held up incredibly well, like nine years maybe. Uh, and then I piled in my rumple blankets and I put on all my clothes and I got under the blankets and I was so hot. Oh my God. <laughs> so I overdressed for the cold. Um, Whip was under there, obviously under the covers because she loves to sleep under the covers. She's like a little hot water bottle heater. Um, I ended up taking off my jacket and just sleeping super comfortably in the back of the Outback. Um, now I'm 5'4". No issues with like bumping up against anything. Really quite enjoyed my little like nest in the back there. Uh, the only issue that we had, because we weren't cold at all, is that the windows got a lot of condensation on it and then the condensation froze. Um, it didn't freeze in the front because we were in the back, so I didn't even have any issues where I had to like wipe off the windshield or anything like that. Um, I just, you know... <laughs> Hey guys, um, I just, we just defrosted the car at like four-ish in the morning and we drove on and we made it to Theodore Roosevelt National Park around 9 a.m. What you should know about Theodore in the winter is that nothing is open. Get gas way before you get in there um, because the loop, the scenic drive, is about two hours or so because there's a, a little bit of a road um, issue so it's an out and back right now and there is no food really and no gas. So make sure before you get to Medora, you fill up on gas and get some snacks if you're gonna be in the park for a while. I was one of three people in the park that day. It was awesome. We saw so many cool things. We saw a ton of pronghorn, prairie dogs, a bison, uh, feral horses is what they call them because they are leftovers from the ranching days uh, out there. Mule, deer. The only things we didn't see that they said sometimes people see would be elk and porcupine, but I mean, it was such a fun trip and the hills were just beautiful. We're talking about the most gorgeous badlands with all the striation of color dusted by just a bit of snow. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. So I highly recommend you going up there. And the other cool thing that you get to see while you're up there is um, Theodore Roosevelt's cabin. It was moved onto the property, his first cabin, and it has um, some really cool artifacts, pieces that 
were originally his, like his trunk that he first traveled out there with. So now I'm a little bit obsessed with Theodore Roosevelt and now we're watching on Netflix a, a documentary about the Roosevelts. So pretty excited about that. So overall I spent maybe four or five hours in the park. I did find like this parking lot and take a nap because I was a bit tired uh, from all of the driving overnight. And then I headed out and started driving to Wyoming. Uh, and I ended up picking up in Gillette a uh, impact crate. So a secondhand impact crate that I'm going to use for my new job. So I guess let's talk about that. Oh, also the weather in Wyoming was the scariest weather I've been in my life, like just wind, blizzard, the whole nine yards. Um, yeah, those people that live in Wyoming, they are hardy folk, I will tell you that. So anyway, let's move on to this big life change that's happening for me in like a month and a half. So the big news, we're moving back to Connecticut. I know, sounds crazy. Um, after just under a year in Colorado, we're moving back. Why? A lot of reasons. Um, one of them being family, and the other one being I'm coming back full time to Fidelco Guide Dog Foundation. So a lot of you know that I uh, have been contracting for them, if you've seen some of my recent videos, and now I'm coming back full time as a placement specialist. So that means I will continue to travel the country about half of the year on two or three week placements and also follow ups. And then I'll be back in Connecticut the times that I'm not out traveling and I'm so excited to be back. I had a friend that I was telling this to ask me, aren't you afraid that people will think you failed? And I hadn't thought about that because honestly, I don't think that people give that much of a crap about what I do. Um, but I, I then I thought about, you know, failure and, and this, what we did coming out here. And I have to say no, <laughs> um, because I don't think I failed. We wanted to do something which was move out to Colorado and see how it was. And we did that. And we had so many cool adventures here and it, we used it as this like beautiful jumping off point to new locations that we hadn't been before. And I also learned a ton. And if you ever wanna really strengthen the relationship with your husband, move to some place where you know almost no one um, and try and make it out there without a support system. And that will, I mean, I think we really grew as a couple being out here for the last year together, but it also really solidified that having a community is really important. And could we have established a community out here? Absolutely. But the feeling when we decided to move back and to know that our family was there and our friends were there and also my Fidelco family is there, you know, once we made that decision, I now have colleagues again that I can go to for support and, um, you know, just to bounce ideas off of and to call when I'm driving, you know, 17 hours in a row and I need to stay awake. Um, I'm really excited about this new change for us. And we're gonna be moving back to an area where we can also have a yard. So here we do have a yard, but it's so small and useless. I'm excited about having a yard again, even though the open spaces are here, here are awesome. Um, we're gonna go look for some place where we can be in the woods and near a park and, and all of that good stuff. And I'm gonna be traveling pretty much full time for a company. So I get paid to do what I love again. Now I left Fidelco, so for those of you that haven't, don't actually know me because a lot of you don't know me uh, now, I worked at Fidelco coming out of my graduate degree or I was finishing up my graduate degree when I got hired at Fidelco as an apprentice. And I worked there for the three years of my apprenticeship and two more years, so five years total. And then I left to start my own business because I have an entrepreneurship degree and I was really just itching to make more money and try it out on my own. And I, I had a gradual process to going ahead with that. But at one point I was working full time for Fidelco and then I was doing my job every night and all weekend and it wasn't sustainable. And I learned a lot building now two businesses, one in Connecticut and one in Colorado, as well as the online thing. Um, and what I also learned is I really like having colleagues. Doing your own business can be super lonely. And what I also learned too is that I wanna be doing service dogs. 
Um, you know, I, I've loved my pet dog people who have come to me for help and, and they've just been awesome people, but ultimately working dogs is where my heart is. So I'm going back and I'm working German Shepherds and I'm placing them with people and that's what I really love is when we do these in community placements, I go out and I live in that person's community and in their world for two to three weeks and I really get to know them pretty deeply and their families. I'm there when they wake up, you know, when their kids wake up in the morning. I'm there learning about their other pets. I'm there when they go to school functions. I'm there when they go to work. Um, and that connection and is really something that I enjoy. So I'm really excited to be getting to do that full time. So what does that look like? Uh, I hit up Hawaii on Saturday. So I came back from North Dakota. I hit up Hawaii on Saturday, which is my 50th state, which I'm boom, super pumped about. Uh, so I've completed that goal. I think my next one will probably be hitting all the national parks. Uh, and I already have a good head start on that one. Then after Hawaii, the next day, I leave for California to do another placement for three weeks. Then I head back and then I think I'm going to head to Arizona. Um, just before we move back to Connecticut and then I'll be at Connecticut the end of March and kind of go from there. So you'll see this channel evolve a little bit as I am traveling even more into lots of new places and it's really exciting. So if you guys have any questions about what's going on, um, if you want to offer any advice or maybe you've moved somewhere and decided it wasn't for you and are moving back, uh, we'd love to hear about it. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up uh, and subscribe to the channel. I think my next video, I'm going to do a review of that impact crate I just bought um, on the way back from Wyoming. And um, yeah, other than that, you guys have an awesome day. Happy training and happy travels. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for our next video. Subscribe now and never miss an episode.